I thought they were very good. Um, the five probably best players or five of the best players missing. I think if they've had them in the team, I think they won the game. Um, and the style of play still comes through when they've got players missing. Um, they were the better team. They dominated the whole of the second half. I think they had difficult moments, obviously, against Rashford and Hoyland and on the counter-attack at times, which most teams do against United. But in terms of being superior, they were far superior in the game. Does that matter? This, this, we've talked about this before here, particularly. Per moments versus style of play. I think in the bigger picture, yeah, but I think that where this team is at the moment for United, it's just about trying to get a couple of results together, get some momentum back into the season. So I wouldn't be sitting here overly critical even of United today. I didn't expect them to control the game. I thought Spurs would come and have a go. We just, uh, you know, Spurs are in a good place. So that, for me at the moment, all, United seem like it's just about survival. Listen, they've lost already nine league games. They're they're not scoring many goals. So today, what you saw from United, they managed to score two goals. They're attacking players. They could have won it at the end. Short term, that will do me. Yeah, in the bigger picture, you want your you want your first team to have a style of play, obviously. And mm. we hear patterns of play and all this type of thing. But for this group of players at this moment in time, it's just about hanging in there and survival and trying to get a couple of wins under the belt just to get a bit of belief and some momentum into the season. They've ma not managed to do that all season. I, I was surprised to see Skip Hoyberg and Benton Kerr dominate the midfield, though. When you think the, the players that are out in that area. They're not used to playing with each other. The only one I would say probably going forward that you'd have wanted a little bit more was Brennan Johnson, because certainly he was one that's not even playing. Maybe the fact that wan Saka went out and played against him, a little tactical tweak by Ten Hag, we thought he might end up playing right back because he realised because of his pace he could go man for man on him. But he was the only one I wanted just a bit more from. Werner did OK and, you know, he's... He's the, that's what you're going to get from Vernon. You're going to get flashes of brilliance and then you're all going, also going to get a bit of disappointment. But from Spurs' point of view, I thought they were but You've got to be careful. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, we, we, listen, we're giving, we're, we're giving Spurs loads of credit. Spurs are having a very good season, a lot of injury problems. Spurs were this, Spurs were that. They drew the game. They didn't come up with it all, Trafford. It was yeah, a draw. A lot of players out there, Roy, aren't they? Man, you might have missed some players. It's amazing when we do a TV game, we end up, sp we end up speaking for about an hour about players who weren't here. It's about the players who were out there. That's If you want to be a big club, you have to deal with setbacks. But and we're not City Spurs were, the better team today? They were the better team, yeah. But we can't sit here and then go overboard on Spurs and say, Spurs are outstanding, we heard from the manager. He's obviously going to praise his players. The staff got praised, the coaching, the bus driver got praised. Everyone's <laughs> getting praised. Listen, it was, a, it was a, against a poor Man United team or a difficult place. And it was 2-2. Two -two. Everyone relax. What's your take on that? I, I, I'm, I am a little bit worried about the lack of combination and patterns of play at United and lack of sort of consistency in performance because... I think that when you're in difficult moments in games, you have to rely upon something to get you through it. And that's usually the work you've done on the training pitch during the week. And it isn't an excuse to say that players have missed because that pattern of play and style of play goes into the squad. You can see that with other teams that have had players missing. So for me, I just worry that what we see is almost like a pass gets played to one player and then they work out what the next pass is. Whereas when you talk to teams that are you know, all the way through this league, they know what the next pass is, the players are in the right positions. You never see the players in the same positions, you know, whether it's Bruno Fernandes, Kobe Mainu, that, that actually, in, even out of possession, they're chasing round people, sort of man-to-man -man marking, so there's never really, they're never really in shape from an attacking perspective when they're out of possession, so it's not easy for them to get but into possession. Like they've been like that all season. Yeah, so what, yeah. we're coming here today, what are we expecting today? I was no, hoping to see United. But, but Roy, when, score a few when, when, it, when, is, when is that going to change? Oh. Because I, but my I, question he, is, he, my can question I just, is, more, is, 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 is our Tottenham what Man United no, but can I just say be, something? or no, can get to? Can I just make a point? Because what he's done in six months or less and, made, and given Spurs a style or direction of play and completely changed from being a really negative team so quickly. So he's shown how quickly it can be done. So I look at Man United and think, well, what are, what are they? This guy, he's, had, he's had enough time now to really figure out how he's going to play. Then Man United had a few players out. Martinez will make a bit of a difference defensively. But it's, what he's done, Ange, has, has almost made it difficult for other managers because everyone's looking at but it. But obviously going, the problems are deeper at United, Jeremy. I, the problems must be deeper well, at United. They can't be much worse than what talk... Spurs were the last couple of years. They've, they've, I mean, they've never I, won anything. I'm, 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 I'm scratching my head a little bit because this is a guy who's coached with Pep Guardiola at Bayern Munich, who's done the job that he did at Ajax with patterns of play and combinations and really fluid football but then said in an interview, I think, before Christmas or a month or so before Christmas, he couldn't deliver the Ajax football at Manchester United. And that 
I get that, because Ajax is such a sort of embedded way of playing, a style of play, but when Louis van Gaal came here, and I wasn't a great fan of Louis van Gaal's football, he was able to play a real distinct style of play that some didn't like and some did like, but you could never argue that he didn't deliver a style of play. That's the bit that I just worry about here, that why aren't we seeing something develop that we can know where this team's going? Is it a high-pressing team? No. Is it a possession team? No. Is it a counter-attacking team? Sometimes, if the team leave pre you know, space in behind... It's not a direct team. I, I'm not quite sure what it is, and I think that does need to develop in this next few months somehow, if it can. That's the biggest worry. I think, again, we turn up for games, we watch Man United or whatever, you do not know what you're going to get. That's all right if you're a small team or you're whatever. But when you come watch Man United, it doesn't mean to say you're going to win every week, but you'd like to see something that they're, they're going to be more consistent. But this United team, you haven't got a clue what you're going to get.